The end of the third season of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous left fans wondering where our seafaring campers will end up. The gang managed to finally escape Isla Nublar and are now adrift at sea in a yacht with very low fuel and no navigational equipment aside from a small compass that is in Kenji's possession. As the final episode ends, banging can be heard from within the hull, leaving the audience to wonder just how successful this escape attempt will be. Some fans have speculated that the campers will end up right back where they started, on Isla Nublar, but showrunner Scott Creamer has confirmed that they will not be heading back to the island of Jurassic World. But where does that lead us? As these events take place in the year 2016, we know that dinosaurs have not yet made their way to the mainland, leaving very little options for the show to continue in the current timeline, as there would be a shortage of prehistoric peril for the group to contend with. This has led many people to believe that the campers will find their way to Isla Sauna, and we agree. Evidence is beginning to point to Site B appearing in Season 4, so let's take a deeper look. Will Camp Cretaceous Season 4 head to Isla Sauna? What is Isla Sauna? Isla Sauna, also known as Site B, is the island where John Parker Hammond and Benjamin Lockwood did some of their research and development for what ultimately would become Jurassic Park. The island was used by InGen to breed all of the initial dinosaurs featured at the park as they worked out the genetic mishaps before reaching a stable genome. Once that stable genome was met, some breeding was done on Isla Nublar as shown in the lab with the baby raptors and the DNA vials that Nedry steals. The island is located 87 miles southwest of Isla Nublar and is much larger, featuring multiple varied biomes as we see in both The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. Some of the most notable would be the typical tropical jungle, but also the high plains and game trails along with the carnivorous redwood forests. After the 1993 incident on Isla Nublar, Isla Sauna was hit by Hurricane Clarissa, which destroyed most of the facilities, leading to the staff freeing the dinosaurs from their limited captivity before evacuating themselves. While InGen expected the lysine contingency to come into play and kill the remaining dinosaurs on the island, life found a way, and these dinosaurs thrived and populated the island. We see the abandoned island in 1997's The Lost World, which shows us the remnants of the InGen worker village, now overtaken by the surrounding jungles. Of note, the dinosaurs on Isla Sauna were bred both male and female, allowing them to breed successfully, and this can be seen with the tiger-stripe male velociraptors alongside their Jurassic Park female counterparts and with the green bull T-Rex. We next saw the island in 2001's Jurassic Park 3, which introduced us to new species that suggested InGen had been working in secret. These were the Spinosaurus, the Ceratosaurus, the Corythosaurus, and the Ankylosaurus. We were also introduced to a new subspecies of Velociraptor, which featured feathered quills on the heads of the males, whereas the females had a sandy beige color. These raptors feature more avian eyes and have a more refined social structure surrounding a matriarchal alpha. We were also introduced to a new subspecies of Pteranodon, which differs to the ones that we see in the finale of The Lost World. These are larger, carnivorous and aggressive, and are initially located inside the aviary, but are inadvertently released by the survivors. It is believed that they are stronger flyers than the Lost World Jurassic Park counterparts, and are capable of transcontinental flight, whereas the others are not capable of long flight patterns, keeping them confined to the island. It is unknown if InGen cloned these subspecies of raptor and pteranodon themselves, or if their origin resonates with an even deeper mystery. This is how you make dinosaurs? No. This is how you play God. With that out of the way, and before we jump into the evidence, let's look at the logistics that would allow the group to end up on John Hammond's second island, Isla Sauna. Currently, the group are leaving the northwest side of Isla Nublar and are headed east, directly towards the mainland, Costa Rica. Some superfans may immediately note that Isla Sauna is in the opposite direction to the mainland and are wondering how they might end up there. So we have a theory. With clumsy Kenji holding the compass and a potentially terrifying surprise hiding on the boat, it takes one jump scare for that compass to end up at the bottom of the ocean and the gang to get completely turned around navigationally. If you've ever been out on the open ocean, you'll know that without navigational equipment, or even a great understanding of the stars above, just how easy it can be to lose any sense of direction. If it's a cloudy day, and or if you have no landmarks or view of the sun, it would be near impossible to find out which direction you are actually headed. 
With a group of terrified teens behind the wheel, it doesn't take too much to believe that they'll end up wildly off course. Perhaps the scare inside the hull forces the group to turn back to Nublar, but rough seas mixed with little navigation experience could lead them directly to the shores of Site B. Likewise, it's important to note that the Mosasaurus is now out in the open ocean, and our campers could be sailing directly in its territory. This could cause turnarounds, confusion, and chaos. There certainly are plenty of ways that the yacht could end up on any of the other islands, and with all of this considered, we think Isla Sauna is the most logical answer. Dinosaurs are not on the mainland yet, it makes sense for the campus to end up on Isla Sauna, it moves the show forward and away from Isla Nublar, yet doesn't return them home to safety. There's plenty of options for more dinosaur encounters, and since Isla Sauna has not been seen on screen since 2001, there is a lot that could have gone on there. While some have suggested that Manticore may intercept the campers, whisking them away to their own facilities, we are not convinced. There is nothing to suggest that Manticore have their own dinosaurs, hence using Sammy to spy and smuggle dinosaur DNA from Jurassic World. One could suggest that Manticore do have dinosaurs of their own, and that their interests lie only with Jurassic World's hybrids. This includes the Indominus Rex, the Scorpius Rex, and even the Cenoceratops, which is not a pure version of that dinosaur species, instead featuring an amalgamation of Ceratopsian DNA, including that of the Pachyrhinosaurus. However, this, uh, this one's a big stretch. Ultimately, the concept of a company kidnapping the kids strains credibility and logic. What would the kids have to offer Manticore? Further, there's a big risk assessment difference, morally and legally, between poaching dinosaurs and uh, straight up kidnapping and trafficking kids. So let's take a look at the evidence. Beyond the fact that Isla Sauna allows for more opportunity, let's dive into the circumstantial evidence that points towards Isla Sauna. Earlier this year, the Spinosaurus began appearing on shelves in Camp Cretaceous packaging. While we know this packaging instance didn't mean anything for the show itself, let's take a look at some of the new items that do mean something. Previously, all of the items coming out of Mattel, whether they were tied to Camp Cretaceous or not, came in Camp Cretaceous packaging, including that Spinosaurus. However, with Dino Escape, Mattel revised their approach to packaging, and only toys representing dinosaurs from the show sport the Camp Cretaceous packaging. Dinosaurs not in the show sports standard Jurassic World Dino Escape packaging. Where are we going with this? So prior to season 3, we didn't think the toys would mean much for the reasons listed above, so when we saw the Aranosaurus toy ahead of season 3, we thought it was just Mattel introducing their own dinosaur species to the toy line. However, it features Camp Cretaceous packaging and as we now know, the dinosaur was indeed from the show. Likewise, this can be applied to the Monolophosaurus, the baby Brachiosaurus, and the new Dimorphodon, whereas the other species in those assortments feature standard Dino Escape packaging and are not in the show. Now stick with us for this, we're about to get real nerdy with the details for the next item, which, as you may guess, features Camp Cretaceous packaging. Part of Mattel's upcoming 2021 line features this Velociraptor. As you can see, it's an all-new colour scheme, although some have noted that it is slightly reminiscent of the Jurassic Park 3 female raptor if it were to be stylized and given a colour variation. Could we be seeing our first look at a Camp Cretaceous Season 4 female raptor variation? First of all, the raptor is in the Camp Cretaceous packaging while the rest of the assortment is not. Now here's where things get very interesting. A new line of Legacy Collection plushies, exclusive to Target, have begun to show up, featuring classic Jurassic Park dinosaurs such as the sick Triceratops, the Dilophosaurus, and most intriguingly, this unique green Velociraptor. While everything else in this line could be tied to the original films, this one clearly is an oddity, especially as it's the same colour scheme as the aforementioned toy. What's curious about this plushie line is that all of these species are reflective of what species were last known to be thriving on Isla Sauna, including the Lost World Pteranodon, which is especially weird to see as a toy in 2021. Here's the deal. We believe this plushie line was rebranded to Legacy Collection and was originally supposed to be a Season 4 Camp Cretaceous line, before the season was delayed to better synchronise with Dominion's release date. Curiously, this green Velociraptor action figure is listed as a Legacy Collection dinosaur on Target's website, but we've never seen this colour scheme in a film before. Of note, Camp Cretaceous has a habit of introducing new colour variants of well-known species, and in some promo shots for Jurassic Park 3, the female raptor does appear to have a slight, very slight, milky green tinge to her. Of course, not every detail lines up, 
The green raptor toy has a horizontal green stripe like the male stripe, and the pupils do not align with that of the JP3 raptors. However, if we look back at Mattel's original Legacy Collection Jurassic Park 3 Raptor, it also featured the incorrect pupils, so there is a precedent there. As we know, the last we saw any raptors outside of the raptor squad was on Isola Sauna. Given InGen's genetic instability, who knows what could have changed with interbreeding, crossbreeding, or further experimentation. Also of note, there is another Spinosaurus release coming out in a two-pack with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. While it once again doesn't feature Camp Cretaceous packaging, oftentimes toy SKUs are locked in a year in advance, so this could be an item ordered by retailers that had planned to tie into the later seasons of Camp Cretaceous, however adjusted its packaging to avoid giving away plot details. The Spinosaurus getting more than one release in a year is certainly not a smoking gun, but it's curious nonetheless. If we are indeed heading back to Isla Sauna, then we can only assume that the Spinosaurus will be the big bad dinosaur on the island, akin to Toro the Carnotaurus and Scorpius Rex on Isla Nublar. Now with that in mind, we believe that these toys are more than a coincidence. Finally, rewinding back, we can't help but recall a 2020 pop-up advertisement for the show in Poland, which featured a series of dinosaur fact placards featuring species that have yet to be seen in the show. Most notably, they featured a placard which shows the Mementisaurus. This species hasn't been featured in the current Jurassic World era and is not a particularly well-known sauropod, especially when compared to the Jurassic World featured Apatosaurus and Brachiosaurus. It certainly was an odd choice if selected at random, but with all the information we've covered so far, could this be yet another hint at what's to come? So what is Isla Sauna's current state? If you're unfamiliar, the dinosaur protection group viral website for Fallen Kingdom featured numerous lore drops with some interesting implications. While many fans would like to believe that Sauna was abandoned after 1997 and left alone, information from the DPG viral site in 2018 revealed that Mizrani Global took ownership and set up facilities on Site B in 1998 and had their own plans for that island. No less than 100 days after their purchase, new dinosaur species were bred on Sauna and experimented on over a period of 9 months. The breeding was all done quickly and only a select few InGen employees were involved, led by Dr. Wu, and had their names removed from the official documentation. The DPG states that after the introduction of new species on the island, there was a mystifying drop in population with some paleontologists claiming it was the result of territorial disputes and animal behavior, with others stating that it was a disease that had caused it. There is also evidence that the island was tapped by poachers and other outside parties who took advantage of the unprotected prehistoric population for their own profit. We can't help but wonder if Manticore or maybe Biosyn could be involved in some of this alleged activity. The DPG viral site states that in 2004, Simon Mizrani allegedly had the surviving animals moved to Isla Nublar during the park's construction, leaving Site B abandoned and restricted. However, this leads to a curious question. There are many species of Isla Sauna dinosaurs that are absent from Jurassic World. InGen have a long history of not being truthful in their reporting to protect their assets and liability. The fact that the island was abandoned and is now potentially under new ownership leaves the state of Isla Sauna very much open, with only half-truths from a corporation who are likely only out to protect their bottom line and culpability. To summarize, we really do not know what is currently going on on Isla Sauna. There have been many attempts to give the island a conclusion, but we won't know the true state until a canon piece of media like the films or Camp Cretaceous truly explores that territory. So let's take a look at some more evidence. So what else leads us to believe that Isla Sauna will feature in the fourth season of Camp Cretaceous? The very first image that director Colin Trevorrow shared of the upcoming sequel Jurassic World Dominion featured an InGen crate sat inside a 90s style laboratory with text that reads Isla Sauna, Site B. While we do not believe that Dominion itself will head to the island, the movie will certainly be answering some questions about it. We certainly believe that it's not a coincidence that the first image Colin chose to share was a nod to the island, especially with how much he's aware that fans are desiring an answer for it and hoping to see more of it. As we mentioned in the intro, showrunner Scott Creamer has confirmed that they wanted to give the campers a win and that they will not be returning to Isla Nublar. As we mentioned, this leads very little options for dino action in 2016. What's more, both Colin and Scott have confirmed that Season 4 will have even stronger ties to Dominion, and in fact, Season 4 was delayed to release in December of this year to better synchronize with Dominion's new release date. 
We really can't look at that Isla Sauna in-gen crate and not think it has a deeper meaning than just a nod to the fans, given that it was the first image that we saw from Dominion. Likewise, the very first thing we see from Camp Cretaceous in the opening episode of Season 1 is a map of Isla Sauna, where the VR game that Darius plays takes place. Wouldn't it feel right to go full circle and have the show's climactic seasons take place in this lost world? We can certainly think of some fun ways that it can impact the canon and continuity of the franchise as a whole, and while we admit that the evidence with the Mattel toys is circumstantial at best, it just all makes sense. So do you believe that we will be seeing Isla Sauna in the upcoming fourth season of Camp Cretaceous, or do you believe that the mysterious green raptor is indicative of something else entirely? As always, let us know your thoughts down below in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. We are rapidly approaching 40k subscribers, so help us reach that goal and hit subscribe. Stay tuned for more Jurassic content. The Jurassic Outpost store is open and we're selling Jurassic themed clothing, mugs, fitted masks and much more. Head to JurassicOutpost.com forward slash store to check it out and check the video description for discounts and deals including 10% discount on all Jurassic Park items in the Vice Press store. As always, head to JurassicOutpost.com for more news and information.